Hi, this is Roger in Finland and today we're taking a look at an RGB LED light in the form from Waylight, the Waylight K21. And for the impatient ones, this is a tube light 30 centimeters long. It can do CCT, meaning um, from 2500 to 8500 Kelvin, normal light with different color temperatures. It can do RGB light going through the full spectrum, either through the HSL wheel or um, via controlling each of the RGNB channels separately. It has a punch of scene and it can be controlled with a really powerful phone app as well. And if you're wondering about my voice, I'm just recovering from COVID so I can do things like this. This is a review of the Willite K21 RGB light. Let's go back to the normal programming. But before getting started, a couple of disclaimers. Uh, first of all, this video is not sponsored by anyone, no money changed hands in here, but we like were kind enough to send me these lights for review and I do get to keep it. Also, the links that you can find in the description are affiliate links, so take that for what it's worth. You might have seen my review of the Nanlite Pavotube 6C2, and yes, they are very similar lights, but I might be comparing them in a future video. Wheelite seems to be part of wheel trucks. Um, the contact that I have had with the brand is that I own one of their lenses, which I've reviewed as well, but this is the first light that I have or use from this brand. But now let's go into some more details and quite a few, and we're going to be covering first the physical attributes of so the construction and the user interface, then all the different modes that there are in this light, then the different use cases that you might be using this light for, then how to power it and power options, and finally we're going to take a deep dive into the mobile app which I think it sets this apart. So let's start with the user interface, which is pretty simple. So you use the power button to turn it on, then it does turn on. We have the set button, you can change through the different modes. And then once you are in a mode, you use these two arrow button here to change or to flip through the different attributes that then you can see selected in the screen. And once you want to change something, now for example, I have the power selected, you can use the plus and minus to then change that attribute. Right now I'm in CCT mode, so I'm changing the power output. If I change here, now I can change the color temperature and put it warmer or cooler. And in this mode as well, which we're gonna get later, but this is the tint, so it can get more red or more green in case you would need to be fine tuning that. But that's how it works and that's pretty much it. The other thing that you can do with the set button if you hold it is you are able to change either the channel or the group, which will become relevant when we talk about the app. But that's about it. To turn it off, you press and hold the power button and it has a USB-C that you can charge the battery. And that's it. When it comes to construction, this is all plastic. It's okay, plastic, I suppose. Maybe the things to highlight is that it does have a um, quarter thread inch in both ends, which will be useful when we go through some of the use cases. And that's about it. Also, these two bits in here, they are two pretty powerful magnets, as you can see. But other than that, there's not much more to say of the construction. It's definitely decent, and I think it goes well along with the price. And now let's check the, all the different modes and how can you change them within the light itself. And the first one is the CCT mode, which is basically just a normal white light with selectable color temperature. And here the color temperature, as you can see, it goes from 2500 Kelvin up to 8500 Kelvin. I did measure the accuracy of this with a very inaccurate <laughs> measurement, which was basically putting this in front of it, a color checker thingy with a, a gray card, and then measure the color balance with my A6400. And the values that I got was 2700 Kelvin for when the light says that it's 2.5K, 7600 for when the light says that it's 8500, and when the light says that it's 5200, the measurement was 5100. So I guess that along the daylight white is when it's most accurate, but it's okay. Um, here I don't think you would be using this light to have a really pristine color temperature accurate light as a key light for your usage but you have flexibility to get a cooler or a warmer light in case you need that. The next mode is HSL, and this is basically a full RGB mode where you're going around the HSL. Um, so here, 
if I choose the color, you can see that if I just choose plus, this changes the degrees, and which does is changes the light. And you can see it in this become how we change this, but probably the light is somewhat reflecting as well on this white table and it's reflecting on my face. But there you go. The other two things that you can control in this mode are the power output, so how much or how bright the uh, light will be, and then also the saturation. So if we go here to zero, we get a purely white light, meaning no saturation on that color. And if we go here to 100, this is as saturated as it gets. And if you think about the HSL um, round, this will be at the extremes. And then if you go to the middle, it's when there's no saturation. But let me put this much less bright because this is affecting now our main shot. Then this is the next mode, which is the RGBYW. And this means that you can control, basically, I, what I assume is the different groups of LEDs within, and you can control each channel separately. So you can control the red and just add red or green, which obviously does what it's supposed to, but you can also add white, which is this, the 8500 Kelvin white LEDs or yellow, which is the warmer 2500 Kelvin. And of course you can then add a combination of any of these and create whichever color you want. But this is basically giving you absolute control on each of the different types of LEDs, red, green, blue, white, and yellow, to create whatever color you want. Next, we have a bunch of scenes. Uh, I apologize for this, might be a little bit intense. So let's see if I can choose a different scene that it's not as crazy. What do we have here? Maybe this is not a bad example of not being crazy but there's just a bunch of them, including these um, flowing things that you might like to put in the background as a really youtube -y type of light. Um, there's a bunch of them. Uh, you can change of really the scenes, as you can see in here, and then you can change also the intensity. So let's make it a bit less intense, just in case. And finally, the next thing you can change is the speed of how this changes. So. You can choose slow, which then in this case, which is a wave that goes up and down with this color yellow. This is fairly slow. It has a normal and a fast option. And that you have those three speed options for each one of the different scenes. And now that we have covered all these different um, modes, let's take a look at the phone app. First of all, let's make sure that you have installed the Wildlight Pro version and not the normal one. And here you can do a bunch of stuff. So including turning on the light. And as you can see, now it's saying powered off because as soon as I turn the application on, it basically connected automatically. And this was the last state I had it in. And if I do this, it just turns on. As you can see, I have selected channel one and group A in my phone, which is exactly what I have selected here in the light as well. I'm not going to change them, but it's useful to know that with this app, you can control up to 19 different channels and in each of the channels, then six different groups. I assume that you can control a bunch of these K21 lights using this app and these different channel methods, but they might have some other lights in the Wii Light family that also would work with the same app and then you can get control out of those. Then here you can do a bunch of different things. So. You can change basically all the modes and here we do have the CCT mode that we have also um, in the light and here you can change again the color temperature, the tint and the power. And then you have some presets of uh, daylight and uh, really cool and really warm and that's about it. Then if I click here in the bottom I go back, then we have the HSL wheel and here we can control the different light. Um, the farthest we go, the more saturation there is, the more to the middle, the less saturation there is. But you have also the saturation slider here in the bottom, and then of course the brightness. Um, I find this much easier to pick a light um, using the phone app than directly in the, in the light itself. So I find this really useful if that's what you want to do. Same here with the RGB full control. So now as you can see, you can control the red, the green, the blue, the white and the yellow to end up doing like whatever um, color that you might be doing. And that's how to control it. 
and then we also have the different effects and you can see them here and something that I didn't mention before but there is a cute little tiny icon which is actually quite useful and quite identifiable in the light itself and here you have a bunch of effects that if you are creative you might be able to use them maybe when I'm out of this COVID type of situation I might do something about it ambulance, romantic, the police, club wave green, flash, blink, a bunch of different things basically. And let's turn it off or let's put it in CCD mode so this is less overwhelming. There we go. And much less power. Then you have some extra functionality compared to what you have in the user interface of the light itself. So there's the option of using this color chip thing which basically it allows you to choose between different flavors of what are light filters from Roscoe and from Lee. I think that this is maybe a little bit um, wishful thinking that you would really get a proper ripe plum filter type of light, but I suppose that it gets closer than not. And here you have again the very different choices including the purple without smoke on the water, pale gold, ocean blue, what I assume should be virgin blue and it's a typo and then the Lee filters as well. Basically another way of selecting different colors. Then you have the XY coordinates and this is the CIE 1931 basically color diagram that all the different color spaces that you might be familiar with can be placed on and here again you can just move around this chart so that's pretty easy and that's what you get. Um, again, let me turn the saturation down because probably it's affecting the whole image. But there we go. Another way of creating this. Then probably my favorite functionality from the phone app is this color picker. And then when you turn it on, and let me turn on the light first. There we go. When you turn it on, it allows you to pick a color with, again, the camera of the phone. So if I pick this post-it and I pick it up, then you can see that it changes the color. And let me try maybe with this pillow let's see what we can do so we have here this color and you can see how the color it changed or maybe this maroon or whatever this color is it can pick it up and it tries to do its best and there we go but this is a pretty cool and simple way of doing things finally the last thing that i want to um, highlight from this mobile app which I find the most useful, is the different scenes. And basically this means that when you are in any mode, for instance now I'm in CCT, 5200 without any cast, which is uh, something that I would um, use, I can press this plus button on the top and then save a scene, which is my key light. And then I can save it. Then if I would go to, I don't know, um, say HSL and I like this pinkish hue as something that I would use in a different situation then you can add it in here as well and this is my pinkish hue and I can save it and now what I have here is then my sin and when I click on my sin then you have a list of all of them you can see an icon which is what type of um, mode you were in and then when you click on that one it will just automatically change exactly to that so if you generate a few favorite uh, kind of templates or modes of operation that you prefer for that light then that's the way to select them very very easily and i know i spent uh, quite a bunch of time talking about the phone app but i find that it's one of the most useful things and i find it pretty amazing that for the price that this light comes from which is around 70 bucks by the way i didn't mention it the amount of flexibility you get by using the app is pretty outstanding. Then let me talk about the power. So this thing um, is, has its own internal battery, which is charged via USB-C. And that's something that comes included in the, in the case. It comes with a small USB-A to USB-C cable and light, uh, nothing else. I said case, I meant box. And then it can be charged. Um, I think it charges pretty fast, but what I wanted to test is how long does the battery last? So what I did was basically put the light at full power and the mode, if you're curious, was CCD at 5200 Kelvin and the battery lasted for a little bit over an hour. It was about an hour and 10 minutes or so. 
uh, the less power you use, the more the battery will last. The next interesting thing is that it can run on USB power, which means that you don't need to worry so much about the battery. The two possible ways to power this via USB then is using either a power bank or any cell phone charger and just plug it to the wall and this thing will just keep on going. I would keep an eye if you're gonna have it on for four hours. If it starts to get really hot, then just stop using it for a little while. But that would be just my advice with any kind of light, really. And when it comes to use cases, I can think of a couple of them, but just let me show you. One of them would be to use as a rim light, and I have a preset here. I'll put it as a warm rim light. Let me turn it on. And then it's something I could just put right there. And it gives me a little bit of a rim light, actually. Um, maybe not too much, so let's increase a little bit the power. Is that better? And to just give you an example of how this rim light goes, let me turn on my key light. So this is the use case of what the rim light is doing, basically giving me this light in the side of the face. And let's... which is a nice complement to my key light, uh, which is, by the way, as usually the Godox F100. Another use case is, of course, product photography or product videography, and this is something that this light is actually pretty, it's big enough that you can put it on top or on the sides and it has all these different effects. So I think you can get quite creative and get quite good results at that. And finally, uh, let me try to see if this can work as a key light. So let's see if we can use this as a key light. It's now out of frame. So a lot more dramatic look because this is a much smaller source than the FL100, but in a pinch this can be used as a key light. And here this is something that I do not do, but I could imagine people that travel and that sometimes um, shoot their videos in a hotel or so. You can just put this on a table on a small tripod on a tabletop tripod like a map or something like this or hanging from somewhere and have a pretty good decent good quality key light that is going to make your video look a lot better let me turn on my normal setup now and of course one of the main use cases which might be the reason why you're here how to use this as a youtube light and let me show you what i mean by that isn't this what youtubers do is that blue enough for YouTube? How about that now I even have a proper blue YouTube light behind me? All right, so what are my conclusions about this? Um, lots of feature for the price. I said a really practical tool that can enhance your videos in very many different ways, including as you saw, use it as a key light in case of an emergency, then be creative by either being a YouTuber or by doing something else. For about 80 bucks, I think it offers a lot. The power that you get by using the phone app, I think is one of the most um, compelling features of this product. And I know that this was sent to me, but I'm gonna keep this and definitely be using it. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. But before closing, Viltrox is running a photography competition that is running as of right now. And if you want more details about the contest itself, you can see them in the links down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and we're gonna see you soon for some more content.